Uh, today we're just going to do a quick little instruction video on this uh, Siemens model 9095 motor control center. We're just going to try to inform on how to remove the bucket properly and reinstall it. Uh, so first thing, before we do anything, we make sure we're locked out, tagged out, everything's de-energized, following proper uh, electrical safety practices. Uh, luckily today we're in a warehouse, uh, so I don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove this 12 inch size 1 starter bucket. Uh, so before we do anything, we're going to turn off the breaker. So we're going to go ahead and loosen the quarter turn and use your hand or a flathead screwdriver. The door usually opens pretty easily. If for some reason the interlock is getting caught behind its bracket here, you can go ahead and move that, uh, that defeater if you needed to. Sometimes they can become hung up. Uh, so once the bucket's out, you may have some terminal blocks here to deal with. I've already gone ahead and unplugged mine. Some of them have a front mounted rail that uh, unplug a little bit easier, uh, but I've gone ahead and done that already. Uh, so the next step really is we have a scissor mechanism on this style that's going to pull out towards the front, disengage the bucket pretty much all in one motion. So I get these terminal blocks on the outside, grab such handle, and just slowly pull, and that's pretty much it. From there you can sort of walk the bucket out, grab by the top, grab by the bottom, and remove like such. And then to go back in it's pretty much the same direction. Um, going to line up you do have some hooks here. They're going to catch on your divider pin. Same thing on the other side. And then our obviously our fingers will go ahead and grab onto the bus detail. So with these, this, the stab is up towards the top. Uh, so you want to make sure that this, this red plate that was once here is gone and removed. Obviously that would be a problem, uh, which obviously was done. The bucket was previously installed. So we're going to go ahead and get that back hook caught. And uh, you probably can't see too well, but we'll go ahead and try to get you in here that uh, there's basically a little hook that's grabbing right inside there and that's pretty much the same on the other side. Let's see if I can go ahead and get you back set up. Unfortunately I'm a one man show at the moment. Sorry about that. All right. All right, so now that uh, we sort of got that laying on the rails, we're gonna go ahead and sneak these through. Kind of walk that in a little bit, taking care not to damage those. And basically now this thing will sort of do itself. You see it's already grabbing and slowly pushing in. This will start to push on this interlock here. And that's pretty much it. Terminal blocks inside, you'd make your connection. Reclose the door. So the, the quarter turn here basically is just going to align through the small slot here. So obviously if it's turned sideways, the door is not going to close. So you gotta make sure that's either all the way up at uh, 12 o'clock or down at 6 o'clock. Go ahead, you close that, relatch, then your breaker should be ready to go. And if for some reason you need to get in there when the, the door is on, again, open this. The cheater screw, which is here. Release that, your door is open. Obviously you would be hot. Uh, then to reclose the door, you have to re-disengage that. Good, latch your quarter turn. Okay, so. Uh, once the bucket's in, I'm typically uh, looking for, I'm going to come around through the side here, we got a nice opening. Uh, what I'm going to be looking for with this Model 95 style is that this piece here is all the way up against the board. I've got a nice little notch out here that's going around these little red fiber insulators that are protecting the bus. Uh, another thing that you can kind of take note is these are sort of aligned. That's sort of the one of the bottom hooks there. Uh, it's very close to that slot that's telling me it's all the way in as well. I can just sort of barely see this little number 10 screw down here. Uh, so that's sort of what it should look like when it's all the way in. If you're lucky enough to have access, that's great. Another thing is, normally if it's not all the way in, one of the challenges you're going to have is this scissor mechanism just doesn't go all the way in for whatever reason, right? So you, you can't really close your door. If you're getting this scissor mechanism all the way closed, Usually that sort of means you're all the way in, uh, unless you're jamming up somewhere here. Nice, nice even lines here. If you're kind of looking at two perpendicular lines here, uh, just comparing. And same thing on this side. Everything looks nice and adjacent to each other. So then another thing is I'm going to come around to the very back end. A uh, little, probably not a great angle here. Go to a portrait. Uh, and you can sort of see that these fingers are mating very nicely onto the bus. They've grabbed basically all the way through 
and uh, it's pretty similar all the way through. And I've got about, I don't know, an inch, inch and a quarter of plastic sticking out through the white backboard there. A uh, good amount of material there. Uh, so I feel fairly confident you can, you can say that this bucket's in. Uh, when you're looking at the stabs directly, you're typically, uh, you know, looking at something like this. And you've got a, a meaty part of the finger there that you can sort of see right there. Um, and that, that meaty part is what you want onto the actual bus detail. So you just want to make sure that that's all the way on. You know, another, another thing that you can kind of look for is with these stabs. If for some reason the stab is not put together right, this top piece is going to sort of unslide. Obviously, once you take the two screws all the way out, it's got these little basically hooks, six hooks, that sort of have to engage at these points and slide on. Uh, so you want to make sure that that's secure, but really the fingers just sort of lay in there. There's nothing too different going on in there, and this thing slides back on pretty easily, enough so that when you, you know, it doesn't come off. So then your two screws would go in here through, which would basically hold captive into the plastic and then would allow you to mount it to the frame. Um, so this is the, the plastic that we were seeing protruding through. Um, and most of that material should come through. Basically, the frame should be resting right up there against the inside cell portion. So, uh, so as you can see, this bucket's pretty good. Um, they do now. One other thing to consider is that you do have the proper divider pan. Uh, these scissor-style mechanisms require a divider pan with this pin. Uh, that way, the scissor mechanism has something to engage upon. Uh, if you have one of the older styles, which is something like this, where you've got sort of these push tabs, uh, you don't necessarily, you need that uh, scissor, scissor mechanism, or you don't necessarily need that pin, but though you could use it. As you can see, this is a 95 pan with a 90 bucket, uh, but you can use a 90 and a 95, you just couldn't use a 95 with a 90 pan because you don't have that pin. Uh, but that usually is pretty obvious when you go to rack it in. Um, so. I think ultimately, you know, uh, you're going to be looking at the stab placement, making sure that that's getting all the way in, that there's not something getting hung up, uh, that it's mounted correctly, though it's pretty difficult to mount it improperly. Uh, and then you're just kind of kind of look at the frame lines and see what's going on. Is there something getting hung up maybe in the terminal block area? You know, is there a screw head on the back of the board? You know, is there... Sometimes I see a lot of people when they build buckets, uh, I guess they'll come over here, what they don't consider is they run long screws through the back of here and, you know they got a, a half inch screw sticking out here and uh it's hitting the hitting the back of the unit and not going all the way in so maybe looking at the back of the unit making sure that you don't have anything longer than maybe a quarter inch this is a factory one here so you can see they screw in uh in that way and they have this little standoff piece which is pretty typical for siemens units um, so that's one thing to consider too that maybe something there is is blocking your your entrance um, But other than that these these buckets are fairly straightforward. There's really not a lot to consider um, You know, so I think ultimately you just kind of if you can get access to the side Which is you know, I have a, a good benefit here that not everyone will have uh, You know that can tell you pretty much everything you want to know so Okay, so that's basically it. I mean, those are some little things that you can look for. Um, and hopefully that when you get it racked in, it sort of looks like this one, as I'm showing you here. Uh, the door should close. If the door is closing and latching all the way, that's usually a good indication, too, that your bucket's in. Uh, you know, if your operator's working, that means your interlock is engaged and, you know, your door should be closing properly and your bucket should be in. Thank you.